with that we can continue to deep factorization machine and we are going to do click through rate why is it important what is first of all what is click through rate it is the probability that a user will click on a recommended item so you are this company that is making money out of advertisement or advertising on your website if a user clicks on that recommended item the one that you advertised you need to be charging the original company that was your customer that was uh, uh, originating the ad in the first place okay perhaps it's a particular type of a shoe that a company a third party company uh, wants to advertise on your platform and then you're going to be charging them how are we going to be charging them you're going to be looking at click through rate how many times that item was clicked through you're going to be charging a price and this is the price of online advertisement that you're going to be charging that shoe company at the same time you want to do prediction you want to predict how much profit are you going to make out of uh, doing that particular advertisement and you're going to be collecting some data in the past to train this prediction model there is going to be n number of instances and what is an instance it's a pair of features and the corresponding label and this particular data point the input data point is going to have m fields of data records and it's usually in the form of a pair of user and item this is going to become more clear as we go forward and then your labels are did the user interact with that item yes or no did they click on the item or did they not for your fields they are most of the time categorical for instance gender and location these are one hot vectors and at some and some of them are going to be continuous like the age so in the end of the day you're going to end up with an x which is a concatenation of these features this is a row in your excel spreadsheet the first few columns of that row are for instance a one hot encoded version of gender variable the other one is one hot encoding version of location the third one is about age which is continuous and then you keep adding uh, features this is where you do feature engineering this is usually sparse and it has a high dimension that's why deep neural networks are going to be useful because it's going to help you operate in high dimensional spaces and i explain what is x field j you are trying to write a click through rate model which is basically a prediction model and you are estimating the probability of a user clicking on a specific application given some context we saw an example of this architecture what we had previously was we didn't have these dense embeddings when it came to the factorization machine layer we were just taking the raw features and multiplying them together for instance we were multiplying gender and location together or gender and occupation together and then you would end up with a higher dimensional vector for instance female doctor or male doctor or you name it here you first do the embedding and then you do the cross product of the, all of those features then you multiply and there is going to be a hidden layer here why are you doing this because now you're alleviating the problem that we had before with doing a lot of feature engineering and taking into account gender and occupation gender and location gender and age age and location that was combinatorially big you first embed them and then you multiply and there's going to be some learning going on when you're learning your embeddings mathematically speaking you're learning both low level and high level interactions previously the low level interactions we were engineering them and high level interactions we were just using a deep neural network to do so now we are also learning the low level interactions you have a prediction coming out of your factorization machine which is this branch this branch the other branch is your deep neural network and then you're going to simply add them and then push them through a sigmoid to give you a prediction did the user is the user going to interact with this item yes or no the factorization machine part is very similar to before and these are your uh, representations for each field you're going to get some output of the embedding layer this is outputs of here 
after that dense embedding layer, you have some number of fields, for instance, gender, location, age. This is the number of them. And uh, per each field, you're going to have an embedding. This is the embedding corresponding to the first field. This is the embedding corresponding to the second field, etc. And if your field is a one hot vector, all you are doing is picking the corresponding vector. If you multiply this by a matrix, which is exactly what is happening here with these arrows, you are multiplying by a matrix, you are picking either a row or a column, depending on how you uh, write down your math. Whether you multiply from right or left, you're going to pick up either a row or a column. That's going to give you your embedding vector. This is similar to how you are doing void embeddings. And if one of these variables is continuous, it's the same thing. You're multiplying by matrix. If one of these fields is continuous, you're multiplying by matrix to get your embedding. The deep part, you take this embedding output. That's going to be A0. You multiply by matrix. It's going to give you A1. You continue. That's going to give you your last layer, the prediction of your deep neural network. This is a hyperparameter that you choose. And as I mentioned, the advantage here is you don't need to do much feature engineering. You are learning both low-level and high-level interactions. And basically, you are reducing the need for feature engineering and have an expert in the loop in comparison to what you are doing with wide and deep. Just to remember what you were doing with wide and deep, there was no embedding layer here or even here. You would just take your sparse features, that's going to give you X, and then you would do feature engineering here when you are constructing your fee matrix or fee function. That is going to be a multiplication of your fields. And then the question was, how are you going to set that? What features are you going to include? What features are you not going to include? What interactions are you going to include? Are you going to include the interaction between gender and language? gender and occupation, et cetera. Now that embedding layer is going to help you take care of that. So that's how things are going to compare to wide and deep. We can look at the area under the curve. We covered this last session as a performance metric. And then you can compare this to the state of the art. And this is doing much better than before. So how does deep factorization machine compare to neural factorization machine? For neural factorization machine, you had these input features. That's high dimensional, this is sparse. You still have these V vectors, but then you are pulling everything together. This is similar to a bag of words model. You can think of it as a bag of features model. And then you would push it through multiple layers of deep neural network. Here, in addition to that, you have these interactions, which are low level. You learn them, unlike wide and deep. These are learnable interactions. And then you have shortcuts to the end. And then the other part is learning high level. And this was exactly what you were doing with neural factorization machines with some modification. So this is only the high level stuff. Wide and deep was doing low level interactions, but it was doing it at raw features. Now you're learning those features through this embedding layer. That's how things compare. Was this clear? Okay, perfect. And then... Uh, we can also look at the performance on click-through rate prediction. So if you end up working at Google, you are going to be doing a lot of click-through rates and advertisement, perhaps in some of their teams. And then these types of tools are going to be useful. 